it's me, Ashley D, and I'm here with my amazing co-host, Foozy B. It's Foozy B. We're excited to be here today to dropping our second episode. Number two. Yes. The deuce maneuver. Yes. So our topic for today is situationships and other ships. Ships, 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 ships. Yes. So we came up with this topic was just conversating with a couple of friends, watching social media and some, you know, some situations in our own life and came up with this situationship. So why don't you go ahead and uh, break down what a situationship is in our particular uh, venue here that we'll be talking about. Yeah, it was a word for me that I didn't really know at, the, at, at first, but then after I started using it and talking about it, it made more sense. I asked a couple of people. Some people knew what it was. Some people figured out what it was just from the just from the word. But essentially, a relationship that hasn't been defined is a situationship. Uh, it hasn't been defined, and it's uncommitted, and basically, they don't know where they're at in their you know in their relationship or lack of relationship. Or lack thereof. So anything that precedes the define the relationship conversation, but follows the initial first few dates. That's the situation ship. And I feel like in this generation, especially, you have a lot more situation ships going on. Yes. We, yes, we do. There's in a, this day and age, I should say. I think in this day and age, there's a lot of different types of relationships. Um, you know, there are just so many um, you know, depending on how old you are, where you're at in your life, um, before divorce, after divorce, marriage, you know, there's just so many different places that somebody can be. Friends with benefits, things of that sort. Situationships. So now, now that we know what a, a situationship is, do you think that situationships can be healthy? Well, I think that you it's de- it's determined by the, you know how both people approach it. Yes, um, everybody's in a different situation. Um, Correct. Yeah, but. I think that any relationship can be unhealthy um, and any just the same any relationship can be healthy depending on boundaries and communication. So how does one go about setting those boundaries? Ooh, that's a tough one. That's a whole new episode right there. We might have to put that on the list. Um, so, I mean, boundaries in any relationship have to be set, um, whether you're you know, just meeting somebody or in a friendship or business partnership, marriage, you know, dating. But I can see we're definitely in a situationship. Those boundaries will really, really define if you're in one or not. So do both people have to uh, agree to those boundaries? No, but most of the time, if you don't, then you're in a relationship, just like any other relationship, where one's struggling. You know, one's not happy. One is not getting the value out of what they're you know looking for. Ah, so where would the value come from? Because with a situationship... It's not defined. So how do you define what your boundaries are or what your value of happiness are? Ooh, that's that's tough. I guess that would come in the what are we? What are we doing here? We can talk yeah. about what are we part two. Yeah. Um, so then with situationships, what is there a ceiling for it? Is there what? A ceiling. Ooh. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure that some people can... Um, have situationships for you know weeks or a couple weeks, couple of months. I really do believe some people can go through years of doing it. It yeah, just depends. Right. It depends on which situation you're in. It depends on where you're at in your life. Right, but if you're going through a situationship for years, that's something that you you basically committed to a situationship. Uh, so wouldn't that turn into a relationship at that point? Oh, mm. So unconvenient. I mean, I mean, rather unorthodox relationship. Right, but just but, going back to the definition, it's uncommitted. You know, uncommitted to long term, you're you're just uncommitted. So, yes, and you know, I agree. I agree. You're tough. You're in a something. You're in a right. something. And I mean, labels really don't make relationships. It's the people in them that do. So, I guess each would uh you know, have to go what they know. Uh, when it, and there's feelings involved, like really heavy feelings. That's why I think it can be unhealthy if it's only feelings on one side and not the other. Yeah. Well, that's when situationship changes situation. So I think that's where you just said the same thing. You yeah, said the situation I know. changes so, situation. That doesn't. Yeah. I mean, that just means that you know you're in a situationship until something changes, and the, the feelings or changes. Um, you know. So you're basing it on emotions. If your emotions change, then you're no longer in a situationship. Yeah, uh, you could pretty much. You're, I mean, you're, 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 you're entitled to every emotion that yeah. you're feeling. Uh, True. No one, should be able to stop you from doing that, but it kind of, do you lay down ground rules? How, how does it start? How does it end? You know, you can fall into a situation. And you can like that person. Events. You can have emotions about it and you can have 
some feelings for them. Well, I, I think if one person doesn't have emotions of some sort, mm-hmm. then there's no passion, then that, that won't work as a situation right. either. Because then it's just two physical beings, you know, hooking up to sleep with each other. Right. And so, oh, what was I going to say? So basically, when, we, when you had said earlier about labels, right? right? About labeling things. Labels don't make relationships real to people in them do. Right. But it's it's really hard sometimes though, to not label it because sometimes you, in order to make the boundaries or it's kind of have to label what it is or what it isn't. I think that comes a little bit from people's entitlement. Uh, when I say that, like people feel entitled if I'm dating someone mm-hmm. uh, or if I'm in a situationship, I want to claim you as my own. You're my, I don't know, for lack of a better word, you're, you're my, my boo. Property. <laughs> yeah. my, my boo, my bae. Right. But uh, I think they want to be able to say, hey, this is John, my guy, or this is Anna, my girl. So I, I or think just telling other people, yeah, like hey, you, I have a man. You kind of want to brag about mm-hmm. the certain things that you do, you know. Mm-hmm. With that being said, uh, what type of situationships do you know? Ooh, have you ever been in one? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'm 48 years old. I've, I've been married a couple of times. Um, Cougar. Hey, um, I've been in I've been in situations, ships, and like ships. What? Give me some ships. examples. And other ships. Ships, ships, ships. ships. You know. Um, Give me some examples. Let's smile for the people gosh, listening. I've lived such a you know such such a crazy life. I, um, just all over the place. I've had children. I've been married. I've been not married. No, no, no. Give me yeah. some specific I've been examples here. Single yeah. for five, yeah, three, yeah, four, five years. It's, it's grasping the straws and we want the juice. <laughs> the Give juice. us the juice. I mean, like I said, I've been, all. I haven't been. We dating. want all of it. I've been not dating for like two or three years, yeah. and um, so I haven't thought about having some situationships, but I was really trying to work on myself. Uh, until recently, self help yeah. is important. Yeah, mental health is important. It's so, actually one of the strongest things I've done for my life. Wait, you said until recently. Oh. Did What's I, that mean? Did I did. let that slip out? You did let that um, slip out. And so you, it wasn't gonna get those, past cu- us. those couple of years allowed me to get really healthy in myself so I can be in a healthy relationship. Right. And so for me, or I was like, yes, or situationship. So I even went out when I first started dating uh, about two or three months ago, said, you know what? I can actually do a situationship and be strong about it because I'm healthy. In you here. have you, you have your back. You you are the base of your happiness and therefore external things cannot disrupt that. Yeah. At, uh, beforehand, like, you know, three, four or five years ago, I was very codependent, very just just kind of weak in a relationship. And yeah. now I feel like I'm a lot stronger. So you're the dom now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that. Um, so I think I just have the upper hand for myself. Right. Yeah. And the lower hand if it's for yourself. And the lower hand. But uh, how did you dive into these situationships? So, you know, I just started, I just kind of put myself out there. Um, I, you know, I was manifesting. I was actualizing my vision. My vision was, hey, I'm ready to, you know, for some companionship. I was ready to go out. I was ready to travel or go to dinner or, you know, quit being the third wheel with all my friends, which is, it's okay. You want to be the first two wheels. I wanted to, I wanted to be the first and the second wheel, but <laughs> so... Uh, I just kind of put it out there and I just, I pretty much just started talking to everyone. Right. You know, um, I try not to give myself those types of, um, you know, judgments or boundaries on that part. Just put myself out there. Um, and then, you know, had a couple bunch of dates. Um, it was fun. Mm -hmm. Nothing substantial, nothing, you know, nothing too serious, nothing, you know, just fun. It was just fun. Some fun and games. Mm -hmm. Until somebody gets meets somebody else who oh, actually until, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> until it wasn't um so about three almost four weeks ago now uh i met someone out of the blue Ooh. hit me like a brick wall <laughs> well, did they physically hit you I don't, no 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 it kind of yeah, just slid into my dm <laughs> <laughs> um i was i was actually out of town I was out um, in St. Thomas. Out the country. Okay. Out, yeah. So I was in St. Thomas at a wedding, and I don't know, I just met this person that was a part of the wedding party and wedding crew, and just hit it off. A wedding in St. Thomas, that sounds amazing. I know, right? <laughs> Those type of marriages last forever. Yes, this is a beautiful, 
beautiful scenery. Um, all the people that came in, that was the best part about it. All the people that came in from different areas, we, were, we, became, we became good friends. So one was from Cleveland and Tampa and a couple from here in Charleston, namely what that person that I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, we all had just met. We spent a lot, you know, really good time together that week. That oh, we really good time. Yeah. Everybody had a wonderful time. Really, really. So, yeah. So, you know, it kind of just creeped in. I was uh, not expecting it. Obviously, I wasn't expecting it, you know, you know, miles away across the ocean. Um, but So it took you a, a flight for you to took find me to it, get out of here. You're in a situation shit now. I think that's getting out of my life, right? Getting out of your head. Getting, getting out, out of your, your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. So I was there and... Uh, of course, because of COVID and things like that, you know, I hadn't been on vacation in a long time. COVID I haven't been police. away. Yeah, I haven't been away. I have, nobody had really done anything throughout the last year and a half. So I think that's what helped too. It's a good outlet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some fun times. Yeah, it was fun. And now you would describe it as a situation ship? Ooh, I, um, I may have at first. At first? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, like I said, I'm coming so off a of sabbatical. Person- of a not boyfriend dating. now? Is, is, is this guy a boyfriend? <laughs> so I came off a sabbatical of not dating. So and I was that. pretty much right in, came in and said, I'm not very serious about this, you know, in my head. Um, I'm not looking for, I'm not looking to date. I'm just looking to have fun. And so that's what I the mindset. what happens when fun starts. <laughs> when the fun but starts, then the fun starts. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, this person I just happened to like a lot. And so it off. vibe on different levels? The second I met him. Yeah. The so second your, your energy was drawn. It was. We we're talking about real estate and talking about traveling and talking about Charleston and just everything. And, you know, I you ever heard of the word sapiosexual? Yes, I have. So sapiosexual to me is just being turned on by somebody else's intelligence or how you both vibe together mentally. Right. Yeah. So um, we just, oh my God, we conversated like crazy. We just talked about, we talked about podcasts and, you know, di- just well, different things. Yeah, we did. Me. I know. So, um, you know, ever since then, it just kind of hit it off. The conversations just kept on and kept on so until we the, got the, back home. The question that was asked. Oh, was, what was the question again? <laughs> does Ashley have a boyfriend? <laughs> but we'll find that out after we pay some bills. Today's episode is sponsored by Charleston Home Team a full-service real estate company in Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston Home Team specializes in relocation to the Southeast region, buying and selling homes in the Charleston, Berkeley, and Dorchester County areas, commercial real estate, creative investments, and property management. The team here at Charleston Home Team brings a combined wealth of knowledge, creativity, and experience to your transaction. All their clients revel and say that they go above and beyond their expectations for a real estate company and agent. You can find Charleston Home Team at their Facebook page, Charleston Home Team, and at the website, chshometeam.com. And we are back. Thanks for being patient and listening to that. That's how the bills get paid. Uh, so we left off on, does Ashley have a boyfriend? Um, and ours is the situation ship. Dun, dun, dun. What say you, Ashley? Dun, dun, dun. So, um, to answer your question, um, about when we came, when we came back from St. Thomas, it was a yes or no. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you know, stole, I don't ever don't, answer don't the let her question. Stall you people do not let her stall you out. <laughs> so I immediately started thinking about um, what am I doing here? Oh my gosh, what do I want from this? Oh my gosh, he lives a mile and a half from me. <laughs> if he had been one of the ones right down the block, yes. If he had been one of the ones that lived out of the state or something, that would have been different. That would have been a what? A, a situation situationship. <laughs> Actually, with a long distance relationship, which I don't know if that's the same thing, but we can dive into that it later. Could have been. It could have been. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I was like, what am I doing here? What am I going to do? What do I want from this? And so, you know, honestly, I, I thought about it and I was like, well, I can run with this. I can play with this. I can, you know, hang out with this. So let me just, like I said, have fun, right? Yeah, um, fun is the name of the game. Yeah. So, You're an adult. You can do that. I mean, so if it feels right, it feels right. So we went on a date that first night I got back (laughs) to one of my favorite restaurants. McDonald's. (laughs) No, Wild Olive, Dick Johnson. Oh, okay. So loved the place, uh, met some friends, started talking. And it's interesting because when we go through, um, in our next segment, we're going to talk about the 10 ways you know you're going to know you're in a situationship. 
And when we go through that, that's when I realized after, um, you know, going through those things, thinking about that, I just knew, well, I guess we're not in a situation ship anymore. Um, so yes, a couple days ago, I decided that um, I would make this person my person. You decided. Did, did he know that? Was, uh, he, was he a part he, of the decision? He was part of the decision. <laughs> um, when I had the conversation, it was a lot of it had to do with, you know, I had some dates coming up. I had, wow. Yeah, that's kind of how it happened. No more dates, you yeah. guys. You guys, there's no more dates. Get out of Ashley's yes. DM. No so, more sliding in her inbox. Stop sending girls. her those there text girls messages. Too. Well, guys was, you know, universal, but you <laughs> so, girls, um, you know, you girls slide in my inbox, you know, slide in so my DMs. Yeah, so that's Let's how it really happened. some situationships. Happen. Yeah. That's how it happened is that I had some dates coming up. I had some plans coming up and I didn't really want to take those dates up. So. Because you found a balance to your happiness with this other person. I did. Good job, other person, oh, whoever yes. you are out there. <laughs> Picture that. Yes. So, so, so did yes. you feel that there was a need to define that relationship or you felt like it was more natural? It was very natural. Um, nice. In any other situation in the past when I was a little more controlling in relationships and the codependent side, weaker, I always felt the need to define it. This time it defined itself. Defined itself. Yes. Kind of like a self cleaning vacuum or something. No. <laughs> self cleaning. Set it, it and forget it. Mm-hmm. Thing. Gotcha. So it defined itself. We just pretty much, we kind of looked at each other and said, oh my gosh, are, are you my person? And yeah. Did we just become best friends? Oh my God. <laughs> like, oh, did we just become in a relationship? So, wow. Yeah. But you wow. know, I don't know about the future. You know, I don't know what the future holds for me. I'm trying to stay in the present. I'm trying to. Well, you, you want to live in the current. Have fun. Yeah, yeah. Document the moment as you take, as you do it. But you I'm know. excited. I'm excited to find the out excitement, where this takes me. You know, and I, I think that might be a, a little bit of a difference between relationships and situationships. Whereas relationships, you kind of plan ahead. Like you, you plan ahead once you define that relationship. You well, define what you in, I should say, so I don't use the same word. Uh, you know, you plan to do things, you plan dates, uh, you plan even if you don't do it formally in your head, you plan some things. Uh situationships, you know, you really not planning past the moment. Right. You know, except that hey, I'm gonna see you on Friday, mm-hmm. you know. Maybe not, even if not. Yeah, you know, or see you yeah, in an hour. If you're, commi- you know? if you're not committed or defined, there is really no future. I mean, right. if, you're not, if you don't, if you're not committed. Or it's a future of chaos. <laughs> future and who wants chaos. a future of chaos? Not me. I know. So, um, so yeah, there's that. Um, I, I really love the topic, though. The topic, when I've been talking to a couple of my friends um, and people around me about situationships, the interesting thing, Fuzi, is that everybody has a, um, everybody has a story. They're like, oh, yeah, as soon as we talk Everyone about does it, have a yeah. story. Everyone's like, oh, What's I, I had one of those. Or, oh, I'm, I actually had one girl. She called me up. She's getting ready to break up with her boyfriend, right? And she's like, What's yeah, like? I'm, headed, I'm headed straight into a situationship. I said, have you even met the person? She said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's, that's a little different. You can't yeah. plan situationships. You kind of. I don't know. I think what happens is when you roll out of a relationship or or even like me rolling out of years and years of relationships and um, getting and, stronger. And, and activity yeah, but inertia. A lot of people don't want to be in a committed relationship because it's scary. Because it's 2021. Yeah. Well, I mean, even like, <laughs> you know, even talking about this person we were talking about, my biggest hesitation for being in a relationship was because, number one, I do not want to be in the committed relationships I was before. I was way too overly committed to nothing. Overly committed to yeah, nothing. To nothing. And so I attached my wagon to a lost cause. And that's what I felt like in those relationships. And I don't want to do that again. I'm 48 years old. Um, that was, you know, I just spent a couple of years. Cougar alert. I just spent a couple of years trying to get my stuff back together in my head. And, you know, like I said, feeling strong. I don't want to do it again. So I can right. see where people are in situationships because especially women, only because I can say from the women's side. Hey, is ladies. If they've been hurt or, you know, just hurt challenged. Hurt people, hurt and, people. Oy, if they've been challenged and, you know, been giving and giving and giving, you know, I, I don't know. It's It's hard. But you still need companionship. Some people do. Some people, you know, don't need companionship and they 
go on to be serial killers. Um, <laughs> my three or psychos. four, well, my three or four years of not needing companionship expired. You became a serial killer. No, mine expired. <laughs> uh, some bodies in the backyard buried somewhere. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so you mentioned earlier that you, you, you know, you, you came up with a list after your research. So what, what is this list of knowing whether you're in a uh, situationship or not? Let's help the people out. Okay. So, like you said, came up with a list. Here are the one, ways. two, three, yes. four, five, six, one seven, eight, ten. nine. Yes, this is ten, ten. relationship right. and situationship commandments. Uh. So, the very first one is you haven't defined the relationship. D T R. Yes, you so have to define the relationship. It. Yes, basically, it's an easy way to find out what your relationship is to one another is to have the "What are we" talk. The "What are we" talk. Do you know what that talk is? Well, birds and bees. No. Oh, okay. What are we doing here? Right. And when is it too soon to have that? What are we? First talk? date. And it's, it's too soon on the first date and it's first too late date. after the first pregnancy. That's, <laughs> that's my guy said. Yes, uh, that's definitely too late. Um, I don't think there's necessarily a too soon. Yes, there are. Happen- there's definitely a too soon. Yeah. If, if we just meet at the bar and you telling me you don't, you know, actually, uh, I got a text message this morning from a friend of mine. We were at the bar last night and uh, he was sitting talking to a young lady. Uh, then he texted me this morning. He's like, that girl is batshit crazy. And I'm like, what happened? She seemed cool. And he goes, uh, man, she just started talking to me about if we're going to get together, it's going to get, uh, yeah, she, she planned the future in one conversation and he wasn't with that at all. You know, I'm like, oh, did you take her home? You have fun? He's like, hell no. And I'm glad I didn't. She was talking about, how she wants to be in a committed relationship before she sleeps with anyone, which is cool. Um, you know, she wants to get married and then she's so mom how, how many kids she's gonna have and oh you know as respectable as that is that you have it all planned out for your life and this is what you want. You want to get married, you want to have kids, you want to do all of that before you sleep with a guy. The first time you meet a guy is not the time to tell him that. That that it, 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 it wasn't even a date. He he just met you at the bar, lady. You need mm-hmm. to relax. You get a crazy award for that. Um, but that was that would be too soon yes. to tell somebody. That's definitely too trying soon. to define. I think it happens a lot. I've been on dates with men, women. I've seen hey, it. In, ladies. I've, I've seen it in other situations with friends, like you just said. Um, I've seen a lot where they're. Oh my goodness! By the first, even the second date, they're already planning. You know, they're planning. Right. You know, they're redecorating your house because they spent the night the night over. Right. Yeah. Don't, don't <laughs> so. in my house and spend the night. In the, well, you can redecorate my house. It needs some it, needs some help. Yeah, but you know so. that that's only going to help me for the next time. Uh, you know, I don't need you to be making a bunch of plans for what we're going to do, um, and we're not even sure if we're doing anything going forward. So don't do that, ladies and gents. The first time you meet somebody is not the time to define what you want to do with them. Even if it's a blind date, you're talking about the future. You got to reserve some of that. Save some for the second and third date, you know, get past the the, the physical things that you guys have. Number two. Number two. No consistency. Yeah, lack of consistency. <laughs> yes. So if you've been seeing someone for a significant amount of time, but never know when to expect to hear from them. Right. Um, if you're in a relationship, you should know. You should know that, hey, listen, I usually get a good morning text or after work or things like good that. Good morning, boo. But if it's lacking with your current partner, then, then you are probably not in a serious relationship. Facts. Yes. So um, especially the responding to text, you know, somebody who's in a, in a serious relationship Pretty much, you know, there's there's not necessarily a timeline when you should respond, but you should at least get a response. So. Right. C- communication is, is very big. Um, I can admit I struggle with communication sometimes just because I have this whole I'm living in the moment. Uh, some people think I'm on my phone all the time and I'm like, yeah, sometimes I am, but I don't look at my text messages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Outside of some, I turn my text messages off sometimes. Like nobody needs me at yeah, this current but moment. Yeah, but to know um, you, you already if, like if I knew, knew you, you, you have I to know. Even if I know that for what, but yeah. you know, you don't have to respond immediately to a text message, but you should give someone the courtesy of responding. Yes. Um, and I, I'm learning that myself that you know, even if it's a text message you don't want to be bothered with, you know, you could just acknowledge the text. But if you're in a relationship, you should definitely know how to communicate with your partner. Mm. If you're in a situationship. You have no idea when that consistency of communication is coming. So communication, I believe, is the key um, to opens all, many doors to all healthy relationships, no matter what business relationships, um, 
friendships, child, you know, a child and parent, you know, relationship, right. healthy marriages. Once it just started, even in, even like somebody who's going through divorce, if you're going through hard times and you're di- splitting up or divorcing, still communication is key. Communication, communication is, key. is the, I think the key for all failure in relationship. Right. So. Well, I mean, if, if you're cheating, that might beat out communication. No, that's, I think it's a communication but, issue if you're cheating. I mean, cheating for what? I mean, if, well, not cheating for what we, we I don't think for, that's a communication thing what? unless you turn some, you tell someone that you're cheating on them. Um, so, you know what? A lot of times that comes with cheating come a lot of times, not all times, but a lot of times it comes from um, not communicating your needs. Right. And so. you, you experience, you know, like a roller coaster of emotions, um, especially when people don't text back to you and things of that sort. Right. Yeah. You know. So number three is a total number absence three. of talk about future. Um, you know, whether it's something to look forward to in a few weeks, a few months or a few years, I can say that just meeting, you know, my person this last couple of weeks, almost immediately we we're planning on, you know, what we're going to go on our next trip. And, you know, what about, you know, I'll, were, I'll be that third wheel <laughs> you know, that's going somewhere fun. <laughs> yes. I, I knew you wouldn't mind being a third wheel, but I literally was talking. I'll bring a fourth wheel. Oh, I'm actually trying to ride out a, with me. I'm actually planning a trip to St. Lucia. In Lucia. 2023, and like it literally already in my head. You guys I was, gonna be married by then? Wait, no, I know. Okay, <laughs> that is a different topic, and that is stay in your lane, Fuzzy. <laughs> hey, so, this is my highway. <laughs> however, Saint Lucia in 2023 might be a you know might be a nice place, but I literally was like, oh, I can now I have a person. A you person have a person to go with. Yeah, yeah, and you and a coworker. Yes, yeah. Yes. And so um, cool well, maybe we'll just take the podcast there and call it a business trip and write it off. Business trips Yay. galore. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, so that lack of commitment is definitely a sign you're in a situation ship. So number four, and I, I like this one. They say number four they, should have been they number say, one to me. Yes, they say they aren't serious. So if they say they're not serious or aren't looking for anything serious, basically you should take them at their face value. Sometimes people are not looking for anything serious. Sure. Um, Sometimes people are in a situation mm-hmm. that leads to situationships. I like how I play with those words. At first, I had a hard time with this one. Let me tell you why. Because I literally four weeks ago, if you would have asked me, I would have said that. I probably said it to all the other days. You weren't serious. <laughs> yeah. or you weren't looking for anything serious. I wasn't. Um, so in up at all the dates that I've had for the last three months. All the what? The dates. Oh, that sounded like something totally different. And I was going to say, oh, whoa, whoa. we just switch into I a mean, new, this is a new lane. It's a faux pas. <laughs> you know what a faux pas is. Okay. Mm-hmm. So basically I was saying that to everyone, but it was mostly because those are the, I was probably saying it because I had no intention with every person that I went out with. So. Right. Um, well, you had some intentions. <laughs> you weren't going out just for the food. None your business. Her, I, I buy my own food. I heard the, the fries here are good at McDonald's. <laughs> That so, fo, fo, fo was popping. Um, so having said that, listening to people when they say this and recognizing you're in that type of relationship, uh, I do believe that you should always, when people say something, always listen and get take it for face value. Right. Even jokes have a bit of a realness involved with them. So yeah. you, you definitely want to know. And you can expand. You can say, hey, what do you mean by that? Uh, and ask them about it because. Oh, you mean communication? Yeah, yeah, communicate. But, you know, when you hear someone say something and you're like. Does he really just mean that? Did she just say that or not? So that's where I am. So um, when I leak out sometimes, actually with with this person, I said, you know, I'm really crazy. I've leaked it out like four times. So <laughs> all, all women are crazy. Let's get so, that clear. Yeah. So when I leaked it out that I was crazy, you can't come back to me in a couple of months and be like, well, you didn't tell me you were crazy. <laughs> like I told you, you know, when we, when we were there, when we were hanging out, I told you. I said I was and, uh, wild and crazy. It's what I really said. Yeah, that that stands for bad shit, crazy shit, guys. <laughs> Watch out for that. But tell you what, we are going to get into number. What number are you on? Actually, let me get one more, and then we'll break for uh, paying the bills. Okay, let's okay. go for it. Let's... So, because I like this one, you don't get to meet the friends. You know, you you're don't in a situation. Get to meet yeah. the friends. You know, you're in a situation if basically, well, if you're not going anywhere outside of a bedroom or a dinner and a bar, um, and you're those not places meeting, are fine. By the definitely way, definitely not. Definitely not meeting friends and definitely not meeting family. Unless you're meeting friends in a bedroom. That's a little weird. That's weird. But that's, um, a different, that's a different topic as well. That's not a situation ship. It, well, it might be it if you got be. more than one. Yeah. Well, listen, I don't think you have to meet the friends. Not right off the back. I mean, you know, some friends are assholes. 
Some friends will try to hit on the person you're with or they'll try to sneak you link, you know, slip you that number and see what goes on from there. Um, well, sometimes you want to get to know the person that's true. before you bring them around their friends. I like that. Um, I like that idea. You know, a person like me in this town, no matter where we go, we're going to run into somebody that will consider me a friend or vice versa. And so uh, I'm not going to try to hide my friends from you. Right. But that doesn't mean know. that you I get have, to meet them. I can't go anywhere in this town without seeing somebody I know. But if your if your relationship is not progressing into meeting some but of the friends, the close friends, yeah, the, close the inner friends. circle, yeah, if you're just the meeting family, if you're just meeting those third level friends, like oh, the I know bar friends, friend. like oh, I, I, I we're know friends because I see you at the I bar know the all the time. You know, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The bartender so, knows me. One thing before we bartenders well, keep secrets. Break, Watch out, guys. This this happened. This person two weeks after we got back, we ended up Your going. Person? Yeah, we ended up going to play trivia with my dad and some other. You let him meet the family already. It was kind of an accident. What? No. It was kind of an accident. Do not, do not, <laughs> oh, do but not it turned out follow so her well. example. Oh. So I was invited to go play trivia at you know a local bar. A local bar. Um, it was a barbecue. Y'all pay us. We'll tell you so, who you are. Hey, listen, it was on a Monday. They asked me to come play. I'm not a great trivia player, but I I said, well, only if I could bring someone. And they Shut said, up, ultimatum already. I did already I did. setting that man up. Yeah, no. So I so my stepmom said, sure, go ahead, whatever. Does he is he smart? I was like, you yes. don't have to be smart to play trivia. <laughs> if you have I a good memory, very, you can play well, trivia he's, too. He's got that kind of smartness that, that I like. Kind of like a smart guy. Have. Yeah, that kind of random information that you don't necessarily well you can use in trivia. Right. Um, so I invited him. He did really well. He answered a lot of high point questions. He was invited back. He was invited back. He was invited back. They, they left you. They said, "Hey, you can come around her." <laughs> well, actually, the conversation did go like that. They invited him <laughs> back for the next Monday. And by the way, we went back. So right. Yeah. So now he's buddy buddy with your dad and your stepmom. Yeah. So I don't want to talk about that. Well, that's a relationship. <laughs> So I think that was, that kind of was the nail on the head. So, the nail in the coffin. Yeah. Who's well, our relationships a coffin? Find out when we get back. I'm just joking, but we are going to break for a little bit and pay some bills, and we'll be right back with you guys. I'd like to give another shout out to Charleston Home Team for being our number one sponsor. We are looking for other sponsors along the way. So if you become a fan and start listening and like hear what you hear, please reach out to one of us, Ashley D or Fousey B, about becoming a sponsor. Also, look forward to Patreon. This is a way, a platform to follow our progress, support our journey along the way. So stay tuned on how you can become a VIP fan and supporter. All right, we are back uh, from paying bills as usual. And uh, we're going to start off now where we left off was uh, Ashley has a boyfriend. I didn't know we talked about that already. Now we're starting off at number six. Uh, and how six you know. No, yeah. not, not this episode. <laughs> six or ten, not 69. Uh, so, specify. Yeah. So we're, we were talking about ten ways to know if you're in a situation ship. Ship, 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 ship. ship, ship. Okay. Surface level connections. It's just on the surface. There's no, there's nothing deep about it. There's no meaningful conversation. There's no meat in the relationship. The meat and potatoes. Well, yeah. Well, so there's, there's one meat in the a lot of time people, people, yeah, a lot of people don't, um, in those situationships don't have like a deep emotional connection. And if you find that you're mostly just a hookup or a booty call nothing for someone that. that's what you want. and that they avoid any deep conversation, that's a good clue. That's, they don't want to that's tell a lot of times. Family. Yeah. They don't want to tell you what college they went to. Then you're okay. definitely in a situation ship. So, I mean, in the early stages of a relationship, the connection can feel surface level. But I think I think there's definitely a difference. There's a definitely a line. And um, when you start, it's going to be surface level anyway, because that's what you're doing. You're you're scratching and clawing, 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 crawl, 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 clawing yes. like a cat. That was just enough. Testing my cat calling. prowess. Uh, you're calling and scratching the surface because you want to get deeper. You want to know more about this person. You're starting to like this person. Um, if they reject that, if they're not letting you do that. Right. Then it's definitely not let you a situation. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I can't stand those. They got That's it. the one thing about dating online. Uh, but you know, I hate dating. Online. Oh my god, it's the worst. But those conversations you're having in the inbox is like, "Hi, you look really pretty." What's your favorite color? What do you like to yeah, do for fun? I, I can, oh in person, God. I can talk to anyone and, you know, and engage in meaningful and wonderful conversation. Online, I'm sitting there like, hey, what's your, what's your favorite color? What's your sign? What, what'd you do today? <laughs> how, how you feeling? You know, 
and, and I'd be trying to just jump off a conversation, but some people, they're not receptive to it. You yeah. know, then, as some that just wants you to get to the point. You know, it's actually, My point is I want to be cool with you. You know what? <laughs> that happens on Facebook too in your DM. And, you know, we joke about it a lot. But it happens, but it happens all the time. But you know what? The, you know what the weirdest thing that I don't like about those, um, those messages is that if I just, if I don't respond to somebody and I don't even know you and you're like, Hey, what are you doing? They're like, Oh, you don't want to talk to me. What are you too good for me? And I'm like, wow, you just went violent. <laughs> right. You woke up and Whoa. chose violent. <laughs> Oh, they send you dick pics or something like that. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, that's okay, but... Oh, sorry. I mean, that's not okay. Not sorry. Send unsolicited dick pics, <laughs> fellas. That's a trap. It is They're a trap. They're going to have your, the picture of your little me, man, all over their group chats and all through their group messages. I thought about the doing a coffee table book. You. I thought about doing a coffee table book and ask all my girlfriends and, and guy friends, too, um, that anybody has dick pics, just send them all to me and I'm going to put them in a book. Is that illegal? I don't, Coffee. Know. I don't know. You know? <laughs> um, I recognize that one. Hey, it's mine. That's my husband. <laughs> yeah, so, so, number seven. Don't, we, please don't Before we get in trouble. Picks. Before we get in trouble, uh, let's, let's, go to let's, let's stick on the, 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 the conversation part. Okay. Because people don't know how to really engage in this era of, if you, it, it, it's all fake, right? It's, when I say fake, it's like you, you're judging somebody based off how they look, especially on the internet. Um, like the internet dating. So you you find somebody attractive or somewhat attractive, but then out of nowhere, you know, you're not sure. The conversation has to get them. And if it's, it's either, hey, fly me out, you know, I'll fly you out and then we can hang out in person or, you know, let me send you some money or something like that. If it's yeah. not one of those, then people really don't know how to talk. Or people don't want to talk, honestly. Um, I promise you, these women are getting all these guys hitting them up. Uh, with these surface level connections, they get to pick and choose most of the time. Mm-hmm. I know some guys have it that way too, but it's mostly the women. Um, they get to pick and choose, and when they do, it's what they want to talk about. It's going to lead to a situation ship. I'm also, you know, some somewhat I'm not scared, but um, a little bit get a little bit vulnerable when you start opening up and having those um, deep conversations with people. So sometimes I just don't want to because you know that's going right. to open me up to things. So. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Thank you. It's not like a PSA. PSA. Treat, treat every. I was not talking to you. I was talking to people. <laughs> but you're people, so you yes. include it. Uh, you know, just treat everyone with respect. You don't have to answer everybody's message. Um, you know, especially in this world of trolls. You know, be careful. But when you do talk to some people, be you know, be, be kind. of their feelings. Be kind. Be kind, Ron. Be kind, Ron. It will be kind, Ron. What you got next? Number seven. It seems to be based on convenience. Convenience. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. But isn't everything based on convenience? No, it isn't. Life is not based life on convenience? Is, no, there's nothing convenient about life um, in general. Um, but relationships especially. Um, when, when you, if you're a man or your girl only calls you up when she's you know, out the bar at 2 o'clock in the morning, horny, um, nobody else to hang out that. with. You know, if, if it's always about you know, what's convenient for them. The last one, the last one, the pick me one. Yeah. <laughs> right. The last, oh yeah, the last one to pick. Ugh. So the lack of planning shows that situationships are really based on convenience more than anything else. So, you know, and that, I mean, basically at the end of the day, it's, I don't really want to spend time with you together, but I have a I moment. I just want to sleep with you. Now, I, I think that a lot should be based on convenience. I mean, if I'm, if I'm not available to do something, I'm not, and I don't want to make myself do something. Mm-hmm. You know, when it's convenient for me. However, you do have to compromise when you are in a relationship. I was going to um, say that. If yes. you're not compromising, then it is a situation ship and somebody's coming out on the short end of that stick. You and know. you often, I mean, often you just have to go out of your way. Yeah. Well, you don't have to go out of your way. Oh, no, just often person. in a relationship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's not sometimes, well, I don't really feel well, but you know, like this person, it, uh, you know, but I sometimes love this you, person. So yeah. I'm going to go out of my way to do this with this person. Yeah. I really like this person. I'll bring this person food. I'll cook for this person. You know, I don't feel like yeah. cooking. I'll cook I like doing all that. I like yeah. doing all those things, but sometimes it's like, uh, okay, I think I will do it, but it's a choice. I ain't seen it's this lady cook once. Don't yeah. y'all believe her. <laughs> she like cooking. I ain't um, so I think that's it's actually seven and eight are actually so close together. I don't know why I even put them separately, but lack of date night. Date night. I mean, yeah. if you're, if it's just con- Netflix and out chill. of convenience. Is Netflix and chill on a date? Um, is that a date? I think it depends on who it is, right. where your relationship is. And are we really just chilling? <laughs> are yeah. we actually Netflix and chilling? Does are we actually going to watch the whole movie? Does anybody ever get to the end of the movie with Netflix? 
No, most of you know, the time in relationships, one person's sleeping. But they, uh, <laughs> and most of the time in situations, so one person's beaten. I mean, right. Like, you know, yeah. So, I mean, so, like I said, it sex. just depends. It depends. Okay. Um, so lack of date night, a good rule of thumb is to ask yourself whether you ever hang out with the person that you're seeing outside the bedroom. I mean, there's that. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it's a good thing to hang out with people. So, you know, like, if you guys are at a bar and you see each other a lot, I mean, you hang out, you go to different bars, that's hanging out. That counts. It might not be date night because, again, we, we live in a different world where date night is not even really a thing for most people. Most people just go out to eat, you know? Let's go get some food. It's not really a date. If I say, hey, you want to go grab some food with me? You're the person I like to be around. We ain't got to get all fancy and don't want bow ties. And that, bring, that brings up a very interesting question. What's that question? Um, you know, you're talking about going out and you're, let's say let's say you are in a situation ship or you used to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and say you're out in a, you know, a bar, a restaurant, a club or a party or some friend's house, a mutual friend's house. Um, so... If you're in a situation with somebody and or you used to be, and now you're dating somebody, how does what is that? What happens then? Um, you weren't ever in a relationship, so there's not like that's my ex girlfriend, that's my ex boyfriend, that's my ex husband. You mean they, they they switched over to someone else? Yeah. So what if their situation changed and they started actually seeing somebody? Now they so, have a relationship. I mean, then you got to sit on the sideline and just find somebody else. Oh no, I'm talking about the person that has the relationship. Is it okay for the person that you've had a situation to be still be friends or do you uh, tell the new relationship i mean what do you do with that my question to ask uh, <laughs> um it's a good question. i'm asking can, the question to myself with someone that you were in a situation with mm-hmm. previously if you get into a relationship yeah i think i'm asking myself no. that as well so i'm born and raised no. here i know maybe a lot yes. of people maybe no maybe yeah. yes maybe no i mm-hmm. think it depends um if there's absolutely no type of energy or interest mm-hmm. where you guys are going to do it again, maybe if you know that person for a while, but you definitely got to respect your relationship and your current partner. You, yeah. you can't be out there acting crazy in relationships. You know, you, you chose to be in that relationship. Stick to that shit. Yeah. Relationship. Relationship. Yep. Situationships. <laughs> Stick to it. Whatever you choose to do, you know, don't, don't be out here hurting people because all you do when you hurt people is you you, you're hurting the next person. Like we are the sins of our we. I'm sorry. We deal with the sins of our predecessors when it comes to relationships. Right. So that's when for somebody sure. hurts you, you get hurt by someone else because they. It's a cycle. It's a, it's a vicious cycle. We need to stop it. So in short form answer. Since I just gave you that long, I don't know dialogue. Uh, it's about communication then. Back to communication, right? I think you also need to make sure that the other person, the person that you did have a situation ship, is very clear about your intentions with your new relationship. Because right. a lot of times, a lot of times, I know from my past, you can go back to that person and they're like, that "Well, when you're back. done, when you're done with your silly relationship, or call me when it's over." <laughs> I, I, or, I've said that to people before. <laughs> yeah, and, and I probably have too, but you know, it's rude. Usually, it's kind I'm of rude. It doesn't respect. You know, it doesn't I mean, respect. Joke, but, uh, wait, well. Yeah. When they're first getting to know somebody, you can say that because they don't yeah. know them. Yeah. You don't know if they're the scumbag or not. <laughs> but, like, so, you know, I've already come, heard, come I've come already heard it a couple of times. Just in the last two oh, weeks. Oh, it's a new person? Uh, we have, well, I've heard it in the last week. Well, when you're done. Yeah, when you're done. When you're done, you're done, done playing with that toys. Come back, yeah, come pretty back much. to the girls. Pretty much. I got you. Yeah. So, um, don't fall for it. Number nine. You're anxious to hear back from them. So at first I was like, wait a minute, isn't that a good thing? But then I realized the difference between butterflies in your stomach and really wanting to talk to them because you love getting to know them right. was feeling secure about your connection. So you should feel con- you know, secure about if you're if you have a partner, if you have a, a relationship with someone. Um, if you're not in a healthy relationship, then you're going to have anxiety. If you're not in a healthy relationship in any type of relationship, mm-hmm. you know, if you're, like I said, if you're married or, you know, just started dating, if, if you have anxiety because they haven't called you and you start freaking out and have, where have you been? What you doing? Why haven't you called me? You text them. You, what does it call when you um, text them 500 times in a row? <laughs> uh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's the word. <laughs> so, or you call them 50 times in a row and you know, somebody comes back from, I don't know, doing maybe taking a nap and you like literally, you know, texted their phone too many, t- just too many times. Um, that anxiety is just not healthy. And we can talk about that for long, for like ten episodes. About I, I've seen a situation where a guy went to a, a young lady's house, 
and was banging on the door and sent a text message to her and, you know, she wasn't home or regardless of the situation. Um, but the part where it sent like a thousand text messages that went from oh interesting text messages and, you know, a little flirtatious to where you are to, you know, calling all type of different words and slurs and well, I guess slurs on a word, but not a word for here, but just negative things and, you know, and that crazy. It, it's crazy. It's bananas. It's, I can't think well, of it. It's not I'm healthy, never. but that's not, a, not, not, that's not just an unhealthy relationship. That's just an unhealthy person, an unhealthy person being okay. attracted to probably another unhealthy person. So I right. do believe well, I that you that, meet people where you're at. I, I, no, I don't think you could. You because you can, you can hide your crazy. This is enough. true. <laughs> so you, I don't, I don't agree with like, both I'm really good at hiding crazy. my crazy. Oh, yeah. I think we already agreed that you're crazy. Not I think I actually wear it on my shirt. We just but, it in and I remember what you're, the thing is. Crazy. Text bombing. I call text it text bombing. bombing. I call it crazy. Yeah. If you send me a paragraph uh, and it's not pertaining to any important information as far as like an emergency or <laughs> like a family member, are you just like explaining we something need, to me? We need to talk. I'm not reading that shit. Yeah. We need to talk. It, either, if you send in a text message with a thousand words or you're receiving it with a thousand words, it's not a good situation for yeah. anybody. So I'm not reading that shit. You better send me the... the uh, so I think, the, 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 I think the, what happens in those... Send is, the short version. ...is whether it's an unhealthy relationship or a situation the, the bottom line of that is that it can be very difficult to feel at ease, especially right. if you need that security, if you do not wear know where you stand. Right. So if even if we That's like asking we're in a relationship a little bit yeah even not, if we're in a relationship text though, bomb, don't send me a yeah. thousand text messages I can't stand I'm it. not going to read that shit yeah but even if we're in a relationship and we're let's say we're breaking up or fighting and we don't know where we stand that's where that unhealthy crazy comes in the text bombs right yeah so last we're, but not least the last one yes then get out of here number ten dun, dun, dun. this should have been number one but I decided should to keep it one, suspense. Three. To number 10, they're seeing other people. I mean, drop the mic. So that, I mean, I don't even have to explain that one. I, 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 was, unless, going, I was going to explain it, but hey. Un- unless, let me, let me get the unless in there. Of course. Yeah, let me do that again. <laughs> unless both of you guys know that you're seeing other people. Pe- then okay. you guys are just casually dating and that's your situation. Should. Communication. But it, it all falls, it boils down back to communication. If you guys both know that you're seeing other people, and by the way, I, first of all, you guys got to know you're seeing each other, right? Sometimes they don't know <laughs> that. Uh, if you guys already have defined, remember DTR, define the relationship. If you already defined your relationship to where, hey, this is us just hooking up. You know, we hang out sometimes, but we do have that open door to see other people. You don't have to tell them the details. I wouldn't suggest that. That'd be a little weird if you tell them every little thing. Yeah. You know, how big is his thing? And, you know, if she kisses you better or does all type of things. That's just um, me. Yeah, it, it's being, it's also, that's like, drama. It's, it's unhealthy. Yeah. Um, that's, that's another unhealthy. We should do a whole podcast on unhealthy traits. I think so. We having should. said that. <laughs> um, but wait, I'm not done yet with this okay. one. Uh, so, yeah, if, if you guys know that you're seeing other people, then it's not, it should not be a problem. I mean, somewhere along the line, somebody's going to get jealous. It's human nature. But at least you know, you're not going to find it as a surprise when you stop by our house and you see somebody's car out there. Are you seeing a picture on Facebook? Are you going to a bar and you see them holding hands or making out with somebody at the bar? It's not going to hurt you as much. All right. Thank you for that. I'm going to wrap it up and say that situations aren't necessarily a bad thing. They're not. Um, We're not making judgment on if it's a good or bad, unhealthy, healthy. Um, they can be great for people that aren't ready to commit right. to a full relationship, but are still looking to that emotional and physical connection. So they're also great for people that are just interested in interested in somebody and just don't. Yeah, I think don't know where they want to go from there, which w- right. would have been me. Um, so you have all access past to your parents, <laughs> your partners in life. Yes. Um, so um, I'm inviting you. My name is. Ashley D and this is with Fousey B. We're Fousey B. Yes. Um, so tune in. I want to I invite you to tune into our next episode for another juicy topic and candid conversation. We want the juice. We want the juice. Maybe or maybe not. We'll um, you know dive more into what you just said about unhealthy relationships, habits, or behaviors Traits. because um, that can get really juicy. Traits. I got that. We want the juice. Yes. So um, I'm going to turn it over to you. Why don't you tell them how to find you, Fousey? Ah. Uh. Don't try to find me. But social media wise, you can find me at uh, 
on Twitter is at Fuzzy B. That's F U Z E B. Um, in fact, on all social media platforms, on um, Facebook, it's Fuzzy B McKinney. Um, and you can look for Ashley as well. She'll let you know. But listen, if you guys want me to answer some questions, uh, you know, just hit me up. You can slide in my DMs with questions, comments, concerns, and we'll answer them on the show. Um, ask Fuzzy or ask Ashley. Uh, Ashley, go ahead and take it away and let's get up out of here. All right. Um, you can find me at It's Me, Ashley D or Ashley Dangerfield on social media and other platforms. Danger Dolls. Yes. It's Me, Ashley D and it's with Fuzzy B. Um, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves. Good night. Good night.